What's going on, guys? It's Nick here. Back with another video. We're talking about rookie running backs today from both a dynasty and a redraft perspective. At the top, we have both Jonathan Brooks and Trey Benson. Uh, these should pretty easily be the top two rookie running backs in everyone's rankings, both, again, dynasty and redraft leagues, given draft capital plus landing spot. And to be honest, I think everyone's order is going to be Brooks, then Benson. Brooks, taken first in the draft, 46th overall goes to the Panthers, which is going to sound in your mind like a pretty bad landing spot. But remember, they've actually had, you know, running backs be productive in fantasy the last two years. Two years ago, it was Foreman from week seven on running back 19 last season, Chuba Hubbard, uh, week six on running back 18. And that's despite, you know, how bad the Panthers were last season. Like they were atrocious last year. 13.9 points per game on offense still had you know a mid to low end running back to that they were able to support also new head coach Dave Canales he's been very very vocal about the need to run the ball they're going to go run heavy they're going to focus on the run game goes out drafts a running back like it just makes a lot of sense here uh that they're going to use him a lot I'm uh, talking about Jonathan Brooks here um He's also talked a decent amount about, like, you know, how the running backs can compete for the job. Coaches just say that, right? He's not going to go out there and be like, nope, Miles Sanders, Chuba, you guys are just complete toast. You're not getting touches. And they are going to mix in. Like, it's very rare in the NFL these days that you have featured running backs. So I'm not saying Brooks is going to be featured, but I don't buy the fact that this isn't, like, his job. You know, if he goes out there and is half decent, this is going to be his backfield. Um, they took him as the first running back in the draft class, despite him coming off a torn ACL, which is one thing we do need to keep in the back of our minds, that he is coming off of this injury, that maybe, you know, it takes him a little bit longer into the season to be 100%. But again, I just don't see taking him that early coming off the injury and then going back to Chuba Hubbard for 3.8 yards per carry. Like, it's not like Chuba and Miles Sanders have shown us a ton these last few seasons. I'm thinking, you know, it's pretty locked in. Once he's fully healthy, Brooks is going to be the one, and he's the one you want in fantasy. Behind him, Trey Benson. He was the second running back taken in the draft, 66 overall to the Cardinals. Um, also a good landing spot from like a long-term perspective because obviously, you know, James Conner turning 29 this coming Sunday. He's not exactly young. This season, totally fine. 29, it's not like too old to produce, but you know, in upcoming seasons, it's very good for Trey Benson here. Um, also, it's a good offense, an offense that has supported fantasy running backs in the past. So it's a good landing spot. Um, I just think probably a little bit better in Dynasty than the Redraft. But even having said that, again, running back two in both Dynasty and Redraft because of how bad this draft class is and because of how like good slash bad we'll get to what some of the other landing spots were. But good from like an upside perspective, but in the short term, if there's no injury, very bad for like short term production but overall with Benson we do have to understand that like you know James Conner getting up there in age obviously but he's coming off arguably his best season as a pro if not his second best season like he was really really good last year so even though again he's turning 29 it's not like Benson comes in here and is clearly the running back one at best it's probably going to be a split to start the season uh so this isn't like you know in, in years past where you've got the top few running backs all going like the middle rounds Benson is probably still like a 10th round pick or so in redraft leagues in like a 12 team half PPR format. Uh, but again, I think he's number two because he's going to be used a decent amount uh, on a good offense. Um, an offense that's definitely ascending right now. Um, I definitely like him at two. After those two, Cliff. I mean, seriously, like there's a, there's a cliff for projections. Any of these running backs can break out, right? And whenever you have a running back that is on a good offense, Running back is a very injury-prone position. Like, the injuries just happen at the running back position. And so, it's a position where if the starter goes down, we could see a lot of running backs in this next tier I'm going to talk about really break out. But for basically all of them, you're going to need that. I don't think anyone in this coming range is going to just be hyper-productive and kick out the starter. So, knowing that, my model really likes Marshawn Lloyd as a pick. He was the fourth running back drafted, going 88th overall to the Packers. Um, Packers are an offense that I think everyone likes, everyone agrees, is going to be a pretty good offense. We like having running backs on good offenses, higher chances for touchdowns. So 
if Lloyd could ever see significant volume, he would likely be very productive. My model is comping him to DeAndre Swift. If he ends up reaching that sort of ceiling, then that would be a very good outcome. That'd be a great outcome for both NFL perspective and for fantasy. Like we'd very much like that outcome for him on the Packers. Big knock on Lloyd is that he's very, very boom bust. So, I mean, kind of like DeAndre Swift is, but he can hit that home run. It's just that like, you know, between the home runs, there's there's not very much. There's a lot of strikeouts, basically. Also fumbles like every other play, so he's going to have to fix that. That is not something that NFL offense or offenses are going to be like okay with, right? Like you fumble a few times, you're on the bench. So he's got to fix that. Um, but then also the biggest knock is he's backing up Jacobs. Like Josh Jacobs is a significantly better running back than Marshawn Lloyd. So he will need an injury. Maybe he can be a change of pace back to start off the year. Maybe he can overtake A.J. Dillon as at number two, be that change of pace back um, and be like, you know, somewhat productive in deeper full PPR formats. But overall, you're going to need Jacobs to get hurt for Lloyd to do anything. Um, another name that jumps out is Blake Corum goes third overall or among running backs, obviously third running back in the draft, uh, 83rd overall to the Rams. I personally do not like him very much as a prospect. Um, my model thinks he's fine. I'm just not in love with him. Um, landing spot, though, is really what we care about here. Um, Kyron Williams, still the unquestioned running back one on this team. But as I said before, injuries happen, right? And they did say that they wanted to mix in other running backs a little bit more this season, keep Kyron healthy. So again, Kyron clearly the one, but they want to use other running backs. And I think they drafted Corum to be that number two. Um, Because I mean, right now he's competing with what? Boston Scott and Ronnie Rivers. Like, those aren't highly talented running backs. It should be pretty easy for Blake Corum to overtake them for number two. And the same thing as Lloyd. They're pure handcuffs right now, but if there was an injury, obviously if he's overtaking that, well, like I said, Boston Scott, Ronnie Rivers, they're not getting a ton of touches. So unless they were to trade for someone after that, Corum would be a high upside play. Uh, another very exciting sleeper is Jalen Wright. My model comps him to a more explosive Elijah Mitchell, which is obviously exciting to see when he lands on the Dolphins, right? Uh, he's got 98th percentile speed at 210 pounds. He's also got great burst. So a very, very athletic running back. That's all you can hope for on this Dolphins offense, speed and explosiveness. If you have that, you can be highly productive on the Miami Dolphins. Now, it's going to be very difficult to project him highly because Achan's the one. You've still got Mostert there. And so if all three of these running backs stay healthy, there is a real chance that they have like a three running back committee that no one is getting more than like 15 touches. And it wouldn't be right at that point. You know, it would be right getting probably like six, maybe hopefully seven touches a game, which is not something you'll ever trust in fantasy. So again... We have a handcuff and we have someone who has a lot of upside, but will need an injury. But hey, it's almost like a double handcuff. You know, if Achan or if Mostert were to go down, Wright does get bumped up to probably in that like eight to maybe high end 12 touch range per week. And on the Miami offense with as explosive as he is, you know, that would be something that would be very productive in fantasy, something we'd really want as a stash on our rosters. Last potentially exciting sleeper before we get into the like, you know, deep sleepers is um, Kamani Vidal. Now, here's the thing with him. Uh, so he's taken 181st overall by the Chargers. Obviously, you see Chargers, you see the press conferences where they're like hyping him up a bunch. It's very easy to get excited about that. My issue is it's too easy. Like, it's too easy to be like, oh, you know, Chargers running back in the draft. They're going to go run heavy. It seems like, you know, he's a guy that they really, really believe in. You've got Dobbins on the team that can never stay healthy. You've got Gus being like, what? I mean, he's close to 30 years old at this point. Don't quote me on that one. But Gus is getting up there in age. Like, it's very easy to talk yourself into him as a sleeper. And so my guess is we don't have very accurate ADPs on him recording this May 1st. But my guess is he's going to start climbing slowly, climbing, climbing, climbing. And he could get into, you know, like the 13th round, the 12th round in redraft leagues. My model doesn't like him. He's a sixth round pick in a bad class. Um, he had decent production in college, but it was as an older prospect at Troy. Like he was dunking on teams like SF Austin and Appalachian State. Like sick, you know, nice job there. 
44% of his production came in three games against trash schools. And the other 11 games, which also included some trash schools, averages under 4.3 yards per carry. So we've got an older six-round rookie here who faced very little college competition, doesn't have a great prospect profile. It's just that he lands on the Chargers. And it, it's in round six. Like, they didn't spend a third-round pick on him. It was a six-round pick. So he can certainly break out. Um, I just think it, it's probably more of an outlier outcome to think that he's going to overtake Dobbins and Gus and be that running back one. Um, and I just think that, like, people are thinking that it's almost the likely outcome. So we'll see. But then there's also that chance, like, what, what happens if we get, you know, an older running back that gets cut in camp or what happens if they trade for running back like those outcomes also still exist they can still add someone else to this team and that's not something i think people are thinking about right now so i think i'm probably going to let other people hype him up for a bit uh again good sleep but i think he's going to go a little bit too early in drafts but like if you're drafting an underdog right now and you want to take him in round like 17 18 by all means do that that is completely fine to do my gut says he's going to be hyped a lot earlier than that uh, so those are the top six in my eyes. Everyone else, so any running back I've not mentioned so far is a deep sleeper. Someone that's going to either need to be like way better than we expect in camp, have a great camp, uh, or maybe someone that's just going to benefit from injuries ahead of them. But like, you know, if, if anyone's benefiting from injuries, the top six are the ones that we'd really be excited about. These guys have a little bit less upside if that happens. But top one on the list for me, I would say is Bucky Irving, um, just because he has probably the clearest path two touches. Uh, Bucks take him 125th overall in the draft. And so he really only needs to beat out Chase Edmonds, Sean Tucker to earn that number two role behind Rashad White, who he's not going to beat out. But if he earns the number two role, you know, he's a, he's a smaller pass catching back. So a little bit redundant with White because White is really good as a pass catching back. But if he wins the number two job, the best way to utilize him is probably in the receiving game. And obviously, you know, if you're in like a deeper full PPR format, that could be viable. If he can rack up, if he can get a role where he racks up like, you know, four or five targets each week, that would still be valuable even if he's not mixing in that many carries. So definitely a name to keep an eye on, uh, but probably more camp reports there, uh, seeing if he can win that number two job, but it shouldn't be that hard to beat out Edmonds and Sean Tucker. Uh, another running back you look at is Ray Davis. He goes 119th overall to the Bills. Um, kid is super old though like how many running back prospects do you see uh, as as a rookie that are going to turn 25 during the season like that is wild how old he is he is the same age now that jonathan brooks is going to be when they're considering his fifth year option like think about that for a second and then you're like okay you've got this like running back prospect that wasn't a high-end prospect had okay production but he had three games over 80 rushing yards last season at 24 years old like at 24 you should be dominating in college you're much older than many of the players you're playing against that's why i discount it a little bit it's a good landing spot obviously like the bills take him you know if james cook goes down you've got ty johnson and Derek nevins but it could be another situation where it's like people aren't thinking they can still add someone else. They can still trade for someone if there's an injury. So it's not just some guarantee that James Cook gets injured and all of a sudden Ray Davis is out there getting 20 touches a game. That's probably not in his range of outcomes at all. But if they don't bring anyone else in, guess number two job, maybe there's some upside. But again, it's only as a deep sleeper. Final deep sleeper is Isaac Girendo. I think I'm saying that right. Girendo. Um, he was taken 129th overall by the 49ers, which would be a little bit more exciting if they didn't have Christian McCaffrey, right? But it's still exciting because it's the 49ers. This is a great offense, but especially a good offense in designing plays for running backs. That you know, reason they go after him is basically explosiveness. I'm just very curious to see exactly how this depth chart is going to break down. If he can beat out Elijah Mitchell, that's very exciting because he's a really interesting prospect. Like he wasn't really on anyone's radar before the draft, but then he goes out there in the draft. And he runs a 4 3 3 40 at six foot, 221 pounds. Like I don't typically care that much about the combine, but when you have 99th percentile straight up speed 
at 221 pounds, which is a 100th percentile speed score. Like when you're that athletic, one of the most athletic running backs we've seen in recent years, like, yeah, obviously it's not awesome that you're behind McCaffrey because you're not passing him in the depth chart. But when you're that athletic on an offense like this, if he can win that number two job, that's exciting. Because what if McCaffrey misses like three games? He goes down with an injury that's not long term. Because like I don't think they would rely on Mitchell and uh, Urendo if it was like a long term like torn ACL for McCaffrey. But what if it's only a, a multi week injury and he can go out there and have like 15 touches? If he ever gets 15 touches in this offense, he's going to be highly productive. So another exciting name. Uh, we'll see what the you know hype is this summer. Uh, maybe a guy that's a little bit more exciting in dynasty because he's tied to the team for a minimum of like four years unless they cut him. But like you know he's tied to the team for a little bit. Could you know they end up um, tail end of his rookie contract? That's when he's breaking out. Maybe. Um, but again, very exciting deep sleeper. So let's just quickly recap. All the running backs here. You got Brooks and Benson at the top. Those are your very clear top two running backs in this draft class. Both clear pass to production could easily produce as fantasy starters this season. Probably not in week one, but as we work our way into the season. Then you go a tier down and you've got some high upside sleepers. You've got Corum on the Rams. You've got Jalen Wright on the Dolphins. Marshawn Lloyd on the Packers. And Kimani Vidal on the Chargers. Still sleepers, we should not be hyping them up into especially the single-digit rounds in fantasy, but they probably should not even be going in rounds like 10 or 11. They should be kind of final round picks. And then you've got the truly deep sleepers, the guys that, you know, in round 17, 18, underdog, you want to take a shot on, sure, but do not hype them up too much unless there's an injury. And it's Bucky Irving on the Bucks, Ray Davis on the Bills, and Isaac Urendo on the 49ers. After that, if there's a running back that you like that, you know, I have not talked about in this video for rookies, obviously. In my opinion, they're just a very low probability dart throw. If you want to take that in the final round, that is always fine to do. If you like a running back, the final round is completely fine to use as a dart throw. For me, I would probably stick to this list. So be sure to leave a like if you watched this far. And if you haven't already, be sure to watch the rookie wide receiver video I did earlier this week. Uh, and I'll be sending out another newsletter as well this weekend. So if you haven't signed up already for the newsletter, be sure to do so. Do that in the description box down below. Now, my friends, is in this one. Hope you all did enjoy. If you did, how about hitting the like button? How about subscribing to the channel if you're new here? Thanks for watching.